Please, I was just talking about you. Isn't that wonderful? Yay. And it is the family of four, I think. There was a fourth one, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know where it's landed, though. But that's really nice, and, and this is what I love about this area, is that they, these hornbills seem to live around here. You've just got to check in the long grass very carefully, and they were well hidden, because the grass is a bit taller than their heads. But I did sp spot a beak, and I'm very, very excited, of course, to see that it's them. Now, I can only see three in the tree, but I'm almost certain that there were four. I wonder if, if, if one didn't fly, and perhaps it's on the ground somewhere. Ah, can you see only see three, Sebastian? Um, I'm trying to think. I thought I saw four. Oh, well, maybe I'm mistaken. The last time we were here, we had four. They were all adults. Let me reposition very quickly. Let's see if we can just change it up, the angle, because they're hiding behind all the branches now. But if this is your first time watching Safari Live, welcome, and you are exceptionally lucky to be here. There's the fourth fly, and it's just landed on the other side. Oh, there's five! Oh, my gosh! So there's five of them here. That's amazing. So sorry, as I was saying, this is a very special bird to see, the southern ground hornbill. It's one of the most endangered birds that we have here in South Africa. So to go from four and see five, that is great. That is a perfect family group. And Kirst, please correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong. Didn't Tristan have eight the other day? Or have I made that up? There were a whole lot that were seen, weren't there? I can't remember now. It was eight, hey, Sebastian's confirming, he's saying it was indeed eight. So that's really, that's quite amazing. I don't think I've ever seen that many southern ground hornbills in my entire life. So that was a very, very special sighting. The most I've ever seen together is, is five, like what we're looking at now. But that, of course, is a different family down in the southern sector of the Sabi Sands. But sitting up in a knob thorn like this, a dead knob thorn is a great spot, especially when you have got big wings, because you are able to jump from branch to branch. But they won't spend too much time up in this tree. Uh, then they get a bit frightened, they'll fly up there for safety as do most birds and then they roost in the trees otherwise the entire day is spent down on the ground foraging like I was describing to you earlier then when the secretary birds utilize uh, hunting on the ground unlike a lot of other bird species that will fly around and catch their prey in the air and they eat it on the ground too so again sometimes you'll see starlings and things or hornbills catch something on the floor but then they fly up they perch themselves and then feed that way these guys don't do that uh, maybe unless they are frightened and they had a chameleon in their mouths and now they needed to fly into a tree they'd probably eat it up there otherwise they'll stay down on the ground well, that one's having a preen now this would be a good day to actually have a bath um, for a bird just because we have got a bit of wind and we know that it's only really the water birds that have sort of these these preen oil glands that allows them to waterproof their feathers sort of normal birds don't have that so the wind comes in handy when you need to dry your feathers off and lots of birds will actually um, have either dust baths to keep the parasites down or they'll physically go and have a water bath. I've never seen a southern ground hornbill having a bath in a puddle of water or in a dam before and I wonder if anybody actually has seen this behavior so perhaps if you've maybe watched a show where they have done a little bath you can let us know hashtag safari live on Twitter or maybe you've seen it live before which is actually pretty spectacular but I love the way that they've all sat themselves up on different branches it's really quite nice. Now, Rick, you said it would be really cool to hear the southern ground hornbills sing. I don't know if they are going to sing, but I can play the call for you just so that you can have a, have a listen. So while you're watching them, I'll play it for, I won't play it very loudly because I don't want to disturb these birds. So it'll just be just loud enough so that you can hear. H for hornbill. I'm now using my bird app, by the way. Okay, are you ready? Because I'm going to play it. So that's not the birds singing, as you can see, they're too busy preening themselves. But Rick, that was for you. 
that was just a call of the southern ground hornbills on my phone. Now they're beautiful. That's one of the most incredible sounds to hear. And you typically hear it either first thing in the morning, just before the dawn chorus has even started, or they one of the, um, or just as the sun is setting as well, you'll hear them making that beautiful sound. And it really, really, really is a lovely noise, along with the Varose eagle owl, also sort of making a very drum-like call. It is quite nice. I'm so sorry that I disturbed you. And you know what I'm going to do now? Because I, I unfortunately gave them a bit of a fright. We were very far away from them. But southern ground hornbills are quite skittish. They're not the most relaxed birds. Um, so I put them up in this tree. So I don't want to disturb them any further. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move off and then hopefully they'll go back down to the ground and carry on foraging. But